Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator 17. I'm Cat Trans Gamer, and I'm going to start trying to do mod spotlights every Friday or Saturday, depending on my work schedule. Um, Farming Simulator 17 comes out with new mods every Friday, as it seems like they're doing that, and they're they're trying to continue that. So every time that a mod comes out on the console, I will be uh, doing one of these videos for it. All right for the pack depending on whatever it is and uh today we've got six different mods the uh pieces of equipment tractors stuff they came out with so let's go ahead and take a look at them in the store and under tractors we've got the cryovets k700 alpha now this i actually like because i love old military equipment and this particular piece of uh, equipment was utilized uh, by the Russian army to transport rockets around, particularly during the later years of the Cold War. This tractor is going to cost you $420 a day. It's got an engine that's got 162 kilowatts of power, 220 horsepower, has a 640 liter gas tank, a top speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Do have the option to uh, change the main color, so you can pick your main color. You also have a wheel setup of twin standard twin wheels, and then you also can choose your rim color. It's going to cost you a total price of seventy-eight thousand dollars. An initial cost, uh, or if you're going to lease it, it's going to be a lease initial cost of eight thousand five hundred eighty dollars, with a per day seven hundred eighty dollars, and a per operating hour of three thousand nine hundred dollars euros or pounds depending on your preference now this particular tractor compared is do, 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 do. you'd have to go all the way down to the dudes far to get a comparable tractor for horsepower I mean, you could get one if you do the engine setup on the Massey Ferguson MF7700, but comparatively for the price, you're going to save yourself almost $100,000 on trying to get a tractor that can do this power. This tractor also only has a rear PTO, a uh, three-point connection, no front connections on it, and it is a uh, pivot axle uh, drive system. So it's kind of like your wheel loaders in operation. The next thing on our list is the Big Boy 900 from Crampy. It's a tipping trailer. It holds a total of 46,900 liters, has a maintenance cost of $30 a day. It can carry almost everything. Actually, yeah, pretty. it can carry everything. And you, you've got the choice of uh, choosing your color. You have the total per, uh, purchase price on this is 57000 And it has an initial cost for leasing of 6270 It has a per day cost of 570 With an operating cost per hour of 2850 Now... For comparison, this trailer here, you would need to go all the way down to, you're looking somewhere between the Kragaliner TAW-30, the Drachnar 8, uh, Drachnar, <laughs> Drakar 8600, or the ASS-298. That's your comparable for uh, tipping trailers, and as you see, the price for the price for it of fifty-seven thousand, it's a little bit cheaper than these two here, and you're only losing one hundred liters of capacity. Where this one, it costs you another thousand, but you're gaining uh, one thousand nine hundred liters worth of storage. So that's your comparison. Now, under bailing technology, you've got the OCO Plus RBG Double. RBG stands for Round Bail Grabber. This has a maintenance cost of $2 a day, has an initial cost of $2,000, or a, a total price if you're purchasing $2,000, uh, 
a leasing price of 220 with an operating cost of 100 per hour and 20 per day. Now, this particular item, you can sit there and uh, the two outside forks can widen, but not by much. So you can pick up different size bales. As for comparison, there is no comparison for this one. You'd have to use uh, a bell spike and spike, put one spike in each bale to pick up two bells at a time. But this is a three-point connector. Now, under miscellaneous, we have two things that we've been added. We have the floodlight trailer, which has a maintenance cost of 20 per day. You have the choice to pick your colors. It has a initial price, uh, total purchase price of 8,700 pounds and initial cost for leasing 957 with a per day of $87 and per op hour of 435. This is nice because it gives you a uh, portable light. So if you want to light up a uh, section of your farm, say your equipment area, or um, you want to light up a uh, uh, silage bay, or even just add light around a field or something like that. This is a portable light that you can use to transport around and well, set up light. Our second thing under miscellaneous, we have the SuperNet 2200 Alpha. This has a maintenance cost of five per day. It requires a 29 kilowatt engine or 40 horsepower. It has an initial cost of 3,500 for purchasing or a mate, uh, leasing cost of $385 with a per day of $35 or per operating hour of $175. It has a working width of three meters. This is nice because you can use it to delete fields, uh, remove tire tracks, clean uh, the feeding sites of your animals, remove the ra remains and residue of heaps, and also erase crops and remove fields. So it works a little bit like the Lizard R5000. It is cheaper. Because this one only returns restores to the initial ground, ground state or delete fields. Where this one does a lot more. It's a cheaper uh, saving you $1,400 on purchase price. It has the same working width. And our last option, our last mod, is the Lizard Road Rage. Finally giving us a sports car. Now this one is a uh, maintenance cost of $70 per day. Has a... 225 kilowatt or 306 horsepower engine has a fuel tank of 50 meters and has a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour it is now the fastest vehicle on the game it costs you 89,000 to purchase it has a leasing cost of 9,790 or a per day cost of 890 or per operating hour of 4450 You do have the option to change the color for the main color, the rim color, and the design color. The designs we have is standard, single GT stripe, twin GT stripes, and that's it. It's just those three. Alright, so here's all the items that you can lease. Or, I mean, all the mods right here actually purchased laid out so we can actually look at them take a look at the cars right here they did a real nice job on these things as far as getting the shape and everything making it really look sporty if you ask me and by making it so we only have the single gt stripe or the twin gt stripe which is actually an improvement considering the pickup truck the single GT stripe is actually three stripes. This one, they got it right. They got it literally just the one single stripe down the center. And the rims on these. Oops. Five. Uh, it's a double spork, five point rim. You got uh, 
sporty rim, you can see your brakes and everything in there. For those of you that are into sports cars, I'm not really too much into sports cars, but as you can see, and let's take a look at the inside. The mirrors on this are actually pretty decent in uh, angle and everything. They seem to work pretty good. You have a touchscreen display, or I mean, in, in, sorry, you have a dashboard display in here. Unfortunately, it does not turn on or anything like that. But once you start up the engine, you can see the RPMs jumped up there. And it has pretty good... I mean, look at, look at the RPMs just bank out there. Now let's take this thing and see how we can get... How well we can get up to speed. So let's see how far we can get before we hit top speed. 163 kilometers per hour. So I'll just... Activate cruise control. Look at that. Just passing this car shop. So this I can see using to get around the farm pretty easily. And you can roll it over pretty decently. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. Now, unfortunately, the car does not have a tow hitch, so you can't connect to anything. All right, now the Crovettes K700 Alpha. The Crovettes K700 was initially manufactured in 1962. That's why it looks so bulky. It's a Russian design, former USSR tractor. As you can see, it has the rear PTO connection points here and a rear hitch. The inside is very bare minimum. You don't have a stereo, but then again, back then stereos really weren't um, utilized. It does have a lot of stick shift controls inside, but it's bare minimum. I mean, this was designed for the military. And just listen to that engine purr. It does have a lot of power. Now, the three bale, or the two bale hook connector, I'll use it showing the Crevettes K700 Alpha, so we can actually see the PTO three point connector. Now that is a little disappointing on the Crevettes, is the top hydraulic piston. Look at that. There is a little bit of a uh, modeling issue there. But it does have a nice range on the pivot. Now, I need to bring up the help menu so we can see how to expand the forks on this so L1 and X is increased stake size so as you can see it's only got the two points it can connect to but that would be for your regular wrap bells or regular bells and this would probably be used for wrap bells to pick up two at a time because the wrap bells if you if you've noticed is a little bit thinner all right the crampy big 900 as you see right here, has a rear tipping door, also has the side tipping doors, and a grain door. It has a rear hitch connection point, probably utilized for the, probably could use that for the Maltec DP, or DB8, or the H, the Kragoliner HKD302 to connect to the back of there but it has a single front hitch connection. It has a grain window. Now the Robot SuperNet 2200 Alpha, utilizing it to uh, move the tire tracks off the road track right here. And as you can see, having a little bit of difficulty there. It doesn't seem to want to remove it from that section of the railroad tracks. You 
do have to be careful because when turning around it will delete the brass so make sure you pick it back up before you uh, turn yourself around and as for cleaning up messes in the uh, feeding troughs all you gotta do is just roll right over it and it will delete it right up let's see how it works on deleting crops lower it down I'll just run right through here now see that's the problem there with deleting crops it's going to turn it into original state it's going to work just like the roller does it's just going to turn it right into a grass texture so deleting the crops it doesn't quite work like we would hope where it would just remove the crop and not uh, damage the field now as far as the floodlight the pickup rodeo can haul the floodlight pretty decently it does it put it at an odd angle I wouldn't recommend doing it while it's unfolded because it does put the legs down and the wheels are no longer really touching the ground you're bouncing it. so I wouldn't use this as a way to light up fields while driving around with at least with the rodeo Now, operation of this thing, let's see, we'll park it right here. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it's not like the conveyors, you can't get in it, so you have to be attached to it to operate. So what you can do is turn it on, and I'm going to move over right there give us a little bit more view on this and it just raises up turns on the lights with L1 you do have the option to pivot the lights and it does have a pretty decent um, range of how far the lights can turn and then you can also turn the lights from side to side all the way around in a 360 degree rotation. Now how bright is it at night? Let's see. We'll set that right there. And I'm going to go ahead and skip to nighttime so you guys can see how what the light coverage is. Okay, right, so here we are just a little bit past midnight. And this is how it would look. All I did was turn the lights around so they're facing backwards, but they're still straight up and down. And you can see it's got a pretty decent range on the lights. If I turn on, this is a Valtra uh, S-Series. So if I turn on the headlights, you see it's got a little bit of a dimmer range, but it's got a little bit, it's got about the same amount of range there. Now if I pick it up, and we angle the lights down. You can see how bright it can get on this field. There are no high beams or anything. It's it's on or off for this thing. But as you can see, it's got a I, I think I think the light I can find quite a few uses for this light, this portable floodlight. I, I can find quite a few uses for this uh, lizard floodlight trailer. I think it's uh, going to be a nice addition to the farm, particularly around the silage bays or, you know, lighten up all your uh, equipment your equipment fields and stuff like that and for the price it's not that bad and I do see me using the SuperNet 2200 Alpha um, I think I'm gonna see if it uh, 
I, I can see me using that for uh, So yeah, all the mods that came out today are actually, I think, pretty decent additions to the Farming Simulator uh, family. So... So yeah, please uh, like, and if you like this video, subscribe so you can see more, and... Uh, you can join my uh, PlayStation 4 community, for those of you that are on the PS4. Just uh, search for Cat Trans Space Gamer in the community, and you'll find me. It'll have a picture of a Kerbal from Kerbal Space Program, Bill Kerbin, as the uh, picture icon. So it's easy for you to find. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!